Hi, I'm CC, and welcome back to the Backyard server. I am here at Spawn-ish, and I have a new project I want to get started on straight away, and that is going to be an iron farm, as this is right on the edge of the spawn chunks, meaning that it will always be running, so I figured this is the perfect place for it. But I need to get rid of all these trees, because there's a... Uh, well, these are massive trees, by the way. <laughs> Look at the size of these! Uh, for once, I actually have a design built, design in mind, so uh, I need to actually just work on clearing this area out. This might take a smidge. <coughs> oh god. Okay, this uh, should be a good place to start. I think, like, around where this dirt is, I'm gonna have a tower. I need to pay attention to that there's gonna be a bridge here. I don't know how big this bridge is going to be, but I need to make sure I don't block it. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of measuring. Okay, I was uh, I was way off on my measurements. I need to be more of a uh, that way <laughs> towards the DNT. Okay, that's uh, this is the better location for it. I kind of forgot about having to need a path down here as well. So overall, completely wrong. So basically, the idea is that this never brick here is gonna be a big tower that goes up, and inside there is gonna be an iron farm. And then that iron farm will drop the iron golems down into the uh, into a lava pit down below, which then collects all the iron, crafts it up, and then puts it into blocks and then be put into a shop. I'm not sure if it's better for me to build the iron farm first or the tower first. Because the issue with building the farm first is that the golems will be spawning on the thing as I'm building it, which doesn't really sound ideal. So I think it's probably best if I do the tower and then start trying to figure out the farm. We'll see if that is a mistake or not. And hopefully I can get this done before we have an event later on today. There we go. Hello. 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 Oh my goodness, CC, that is amazing. <laughs> I love the little head so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. This is. I love how the pajamas oh! just matches everyone's personality so much. We're hiking. Let's oh. go. We're hiking. Oh. Hiking. Let us go. Oh. Pajama hike. Pajama hike. Pajama hike. Oh no! There's this. Oh my god! The run. Oh, oh god! <laughs> Wait. Oh, there's a zombie. Watch out! Oh, get oh, him! Beat him up! Get him! Beat him get up! Him. Get, get him! Get him! Get him! Oh. Ow. Cece, I think you hit me more than the zombie. Uh, it's like Cece's chasing the eight. That oh, piece another of string. one! What's this string around? I wanna play... Uh, <laughs> no, is severe is oh, inside. Back inside. Wait, we need, we need to get Cherry and she's like, she's AFK! Someone help me push! Oh no. <laughs> Someone help push, push her in. Yeah, everyone push, click push. the Five, four, three, two, one, go! Yeah! Yeah! Success from Sleepover! Sleepover! Oh god! Classic various war crimes. Yay, Yay war crime! <laughs> you guys ready for some epic bustin' moments in the bustin' times <laughs> in the end? No! What? An epic 360 replay mod solo kill, yes. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, ready? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, that's not good. no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's really bad. Wait, don't worry, I'll sort it. Where, Where's where the is dragon? It? I got it. I don't know. No. What? Where's he not here? We forgot to invite the dragon to the end fight. <laughs> I think that's where the yeah, tunnel the is. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, wait, you actually did. Oh, oh wait, wait, I hang on. The dragon. He's back, he's back, he's back. Wait, he's back. He's back! Oh, he just show up? Uh, okay, one issue is... The... The dragon... He spawns for me. I'm a terrible shot. What the heck is this? Three... Two... One... Fire! Oh. Oh. So, that was, um... A lot. Uh, <laughs> Basically, Timer invited us over to have a little sleepover and play some apples to apples. But I thought I'd leave the apples to apples for other people's point of view. After that, we then went to do the end fight. 
And while we were there, we did a little bit of end busting. I now have access to shulker boxes, an actual decent supply. So I'm slowly building up my shulker box storage system, and it's amazing. I love it so much. I also have a lighter. Yeah. I can finally fly on this server and also look at my cute pajamas. <laughs> but we can actually get a good idea of the layout of spawn now. Look at that. It is really expanded over time, and now we're getting over to here where we have my towers. So let's go to this tree. Right. Yeah, I think that kind of shows how having a light has been for me so far. <laughs> Probably best if I don't keep this on unless I'm doing long distance traveling. But anyways, the iron farm, look, it's, it's powered. It's obviously not done. There's going to be detailing and stuff done, but on the inside... We have a bit of the oh hello a bit of the functionality going. So crispy actually helped me out and got us some uh, villagers over here now, and I set up a little iron farm and it seems to be working fine. But I have had a few issues with it here and there, and they all seem to stem from the fact that the villagers just sometimes refuse to sleep. Basically, the way that these work is that every thirty seconds the villagers will check to see if there's an iron golem and if there isn't it will spawn a new one because they're scared of the zombie but they also cannot spawn a new golem unless they have slept in the last 20 minutes and the issue is that sometimes these guys just don't sleep because they are scared of the zombie and don't have a chance to not be scared and then go to sleep which is a horrific statement out loud I feel so bad for these guys but uh, too late for that so basically I need to set up a system to avoid that. And I think the easiest way of doing that is probably going to be to just uh, block their sight every so often. They can actually have a little bit of peace for like, even if it's just like half a second, just to give them, just to be able to like reset their timers. And I think the easiest way of doing that is going to be by using pistons that push up like sand or concrete pad or something up and then drops it down like every 10 minutes or so. And I think I can do that pretty easily by using a daylight sensor. Ow. If I power this, it should push it up. Oh no. Right, yes, that's an issue. I'm hoping that like when it pushes up, he doesn't try and like move through. He did before. It's technically at that point, he should see it as be... I didn't even know you could do that. Oh no! Oh, you melon. Okay, ow! Okay, I want you back. No, I don't want you with him. No, I want you to split up. Stop being friends. Stop being friends! <laughs> if, I, if I die, I'm gonna block this off, actually. <laughs> That's just asking for danger. <laughs> I do this and then put in ground concrete pad that falls on top. Only the zombie villager should be able to... Not if I do that. Ah. Come on, over here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I need to go back to my base and grab a weakness potion and a golden apple. Actually, while I'm there, I can also get another one. Because, uh, also, when uh, Crispy and I brought over the villagers, we accidentally brought over Levi, my leather worker, and uh, yeah, he got bit, and he's dead now. But we can bring him back, I just need to get some uh, revival materials. Okay, Levi, give you a weakness potion, and a... There we go, uh, give you that, and that. Okay, now it's need to wait, I don't know, like five minutes, I think. Like that, there you go. But then the second the pistons come down, oh look, they're, they're, they're fine. So that's basically what I want to do. What I want to do. Okay, that should do. Yeah, so basically any time that the, like, the time, I think it's like every hour or every in-game hour, this should do an update. There we go. And it'll drop them down. Oh, and also... And Levi just got revived. Sorry about that, buddy. But hey, your, your trades are amazing now. <laughs> Look at the one emerald for a saddle. Not bad. Oh, there you go. He's been revived. 
So hopefully that means... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. There we go. Right, yes, it's not going to work until that guy there has slept once. So I need to wait until night time, basically. Well, while it's doing that, and maybe I can start getting sorted with me taking him home, actually. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's take Levi home so he's no longer in this horrible box. Okay, he's uh, back here. I just need him to actually get in... Where are you going? Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Yes, 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 yeah! Okay, perfect. And I close this one too. And you're home! Yay! Oh, whoa! Hello? It's, it's an armor stack. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> yep, crowd around the creeper. There we go. Okay. Oh. Uh, check target. Yeah, there it is. Look, cheeky little armor stand. Uh, how do I like actually use this? <laughs> little baby. Uh, oh, um, so how do I? Eh, how do I fix? I want to get rid of him. He's currently locked. I think. How do I unlock him? I can't get rid of him. Okay, he has gravity. Yeah, I can see the stand now. Maybe. Ah, there we go. Okay, I needed to have the stand visible. Look at, I've got a little teddy. I've got a little, cute, little creeper teddy. <laughs> Can I wear it? Oh, look. He's, he's so cute. I've got like a, I've got like a creeper beard. <laughs> Arg. Is that a creeper beard? There we go. That's definitely not going to spook me again in the future. Uh, now it's night time. I should hopefully have have the thing fixed. Oh yay! Look, it, 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 it's doing the thing. Woo! Uh, if I quickly look inside of the chests, you'll see that there is actually quite a decent amount, and this is when it wasn't working properly. I'd say the farm has been running for roughly probably an hour and a half to two hours, and I've got a nine stack plus. 15, 16, and it also took about 20 iron blocks as well, so it's like about 20 stacks of iron, which is not bad for the amount of time that it has actually been functional. And with it being in the spawn chunks, it should just be running basically forever. Next up on the docket is going to be detailing, and I'm going to go for a bit of a diesel punk style. I am a little bit worried about it being too tall, as over here at like the center of spawn, it is sort of peeking over a little bit, and this isn't going to be the max height. It'll probably go up to about there-ish. So uh, we'll see. I might adjust some of the adjust some of the oh my god, adjust it a little bit. But honestly, I think it'll be fine. And things are starting to look a lot better around here now. I've got some like uh, smokestack sort of things. Got some cogs on the wall. Got some pipes and stuff, and a lot of like desolate landscape around the side, which is kind of the aesthetic I want to go for. As if this place is literally like just seeping the life out of the area around it. But I still need to do some detailing around the back because it still looks like this, but we'll get to it. For now, though, I want to focus on the interior, which is looking pretty good so far. It's a bit basic, but that's fine, I think. Got myself an ATM over here because it's always annoying when you're shopping and you can't access your money. But over here, uh, we have the actual storefront. So this is where you'll actually buy the iron. And I'm doing it as one slot equals one diamond. That way I can adjust how much iron is per slot. And speaking of iron, look how much I have gotten since the uh, the last clip. Oh, it's amazing. This is ridiculous. <laughs> iron farms are so busted. <laughs> Maybe too busted. <laughs> There we go. I think that's a, a decent uh, price for now. We'll have to sort of see what the stock's like in the future and if people are actually buying it at this price. If no one buys, I can always sell them more. But uh, now I want to get into some of the redstone because I am go going to need uh, a crafter down below. Okay, let's just start by clearing out an area. I also probably need a light up back there too, actually. I'll set up a more uh, secretive way down eventually, but for now this should do the trick. I have to reorganize all the hoppers. Oh, that's scary, opening up that and seeing lava. <laughs> right, yes, I'm going to actually need to have an item filter, aren't I? Because we'll be getting uh, poppies. 
I was about to say I've run out of hoppers. I need to go back to my base and get some more. Uh, I'm in an iron farm. I could just, you know, make some. <laughs> I'm not used to having an abundance of iron on hand. Though I am almost out of chests, so I might have to go back for that. Okay, here is the poppy disposal. Basically, this filter here will be set to poppies. I can actually do that now if I just grab some. There we go. If I just do this and then that, that should now only filter out poppies. They'll then go over into these chests, and if these chests overflow, they'll just go into this composter and turn into bone meal. Hopefully that won't overflow too quickly. If I ever get close to overflowing, I might just also set up like a dispenser that throws them into lava. But I could also technically set up a crafter over here that turns them into bone blocks. I can do that. <laughs> there you go. And that crafted it. Perfect. Okay. So imagine that was bone meal. That would just craft up into a bone block. And that's never going to overflow. At least it's running, it'll have to be running for a long time for that to overflow. <laughs> okay, now we can go on to the iron storage, which should be basically the same as this bit over here, just over here. And I think this should be fine for the iron crafter as well. It's pretty much the exact same circuit. Just uh, crafts up the iron ingots once it fills up all the slots. And then when it does, it'll just pass it through all these hoppers in this uh, set of 12 double chests. This should last me pretty much forever. I also use some hoppers with pots on... Oops, I forgot they were into the break. So I've placed a decorated pot on top of this hopper just for the sake of like saving some space. But I also want to do the same on top of these ones as like a lag busting method. So I'm gonna make all... Oh, these stack? I did not know they stacked. I thought these were not stackable. That's amazing. Okay, so yeah, I think if I use decorated pots on top of these, this is like a good way of like lag busting. Since we're in spawn, I want to make sure that I am being as conservative on server performance as I can be. Oh, I need to also actually make all the hoppers go to the right place. So let's do that quickly. Hopefully no golem spawns in quickly. There we go. Once I put that in, it should start pumping stuff into the crafter. So when this golem dies, there should be some iron going into here. Yep, there we go, and that crafts them to a block, and that should now be down here. Perfect. And then the uh, the poppies should also be down here. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so there's actually one more thing I want to do before I uh, call this a done project, aside from decorating that is. And I kind of want to give a sort of secret entrance to the area down below. This isn't exactly the most secure system, but basically just for an item, and there you go, opens up. You can do all your stuff and then go back up and then just throw in another item. There you go. Obviously, you could use like renamed items, but I cannot be bothered and I'm just gonna use anything at all. It could be scaffolding blacks or whatever. <laughs> just get stored in there. So now I just need to do some decorating in here, try and make whatever this is look nice. And yeah, that, that should be everything. And we'll do a sort of. It, it, there we go. I've got a nice little room down here, got my storage, got my stuff, got all the access, and also have a little barrel here to collect the items from the area up top. But I've also put in a button down here just in case I get locked in like that. Don't want someone just coming up top, throwing an item down, and then you're stuck there forever. <laughs> but yep, I am now all done, I think. That is the farm, not farm, that, well, I said the farm. That is the farm and shop all done. Now I just need to do all the outside stuff, but I don't feel like it right now. Oh, uh, something I completely forgot to mention is that I have added in a, or done some changes up here. Basically, I've just moved the pistons up and put a solid block here. I don't know why I thought I had to do the falling block. For some reason, I thought I couldn't put a piston here, but like, I can. There's no reason I can't. And this has also made it so the zombie cannot get through. There were still a few chances for the zombie to, like, sneak through the falling blocks, so... Look at his nose. <laughs> you see that? What the heck? <laughs> uh, no, no, this, this should all be sorted now. It is working great, and actually, if I quickly head down below, you'll see... Yeah, I've got quite a bit of iron. Actually, what's my poppies looking like? Ooh, it's almost a double chest. After I uh, get into the mice and see if you want some for his flower shop. And also, in this... Oh, we've got some sales. 
wow, okay, that's 54 diamonds right off the bat. Nice, let's, uh, let's actually just quickly restock them, I guess. I don't know how much it takes to restock a single, uh, single chest. Maybe I have to change the pricing somewhat, I don't know. Okay, that's actually not too many iron blocks to restock. And also got these ones down here, I might as well do as well. Just do... There we go, perfect. And I have all these ones just for personal use now, I guess. I should probably set a timer, actually, and kind of see how much iron I get in, like, a certain period to get an idea of how much iron I'll be getting in total. But uh, we'll do that later. So there's actually one thing I want to do before we end off this video. So over here by my cat cafe, down in this water over here, we have a little experiment that uh, we've been given a go with, and it hasn't gone great. Basically, we tried to make a ink farm by letting loose a axolotl in this big section of water. And yeah, it's, it, the, the axolotls are gone. We've had like a bunch of them in here and I think there's only like one remaining maybe over here. Yeah, there's this guy over here who is just a bit confused and then the rest of them have gone entirely missing. So I think I want to try something a bit more extreme and that is going to be by using a sea guardian to do this instead uh but well i need to, i can't really do it here because this is like a main river and i don't really want to just block off the main river so i have somewhere else in mind now i would like to do it over here by my base but the issue is that this river here isn't actually a river if i quickly just jump into it and then look at the f3 screen on the left it says it is a sakura valley and Sakura Valleys can't spawn squids, so basically nothing ever really spawns in here except from the occasional drowned. So if I just quickly head over this way though, we have this bit over here which is a actual river. Like you can see some squids spawning right there. And conveniently, BH has just so happened to uh, have like kind of taken the spot over there and it's basically blocked off the river. So this is no longer an actual active river anymore. So what I might do is just set up a uh, a guardian somewhere around here and just kind of let it loose, have an allay that's just constantly picking up all the items. And also a good thing with having a guardian is that they won't bother with drowns. Allays will try and kill drowns and there's a chance that they will die to them. And also speaking of drowns, there's one with a trident down there. I don't actually have a trident yet. Ow. And I still don't. Oh well. The interesting bit is going to be trying to get a guardian over here. And I have zero idea as how I'm going to do that. So the guardian farm hasn't really changed much since the last time we were here. Uh, but I need to somehow get a guardian out of this. And my first idea is to use a boat. Will the guardian get into that? Not if it goes off the edge. Oh lord, this has gone bad. Can you guys get out? Oh, okay, they can get out, but they die. Okay, if I just do this, just do... Can you not place the... Oh, ow! Okay, there we go, got one. And then if I can just sort of get in the boat with you, there we go. So now I just need to somehow get him over to that area. And I'm kind of thinking maybe using the never? It's a little bit dangerous over here. We'll just kind of uh, block off the sides for now. I'll have to also clear out the path over to the uh, the next area. The path should now all be in, so let's just, uh, I guess, let this guy loose. Just do this, and then whack. Nope. Whack. Okay, he's gone. Nope, he isn't. Don't go back through. Oh, no, I thought he went back through. Uh, can I quickly just break the portal, actually? Why isn't he getting in the boat? No, don't go this way. No, get back. No. No! Okay. Oh my god, that guy got launched. Onwards to victory. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Put a few boats around. Ow. Yeah! Why do I end up boating through the never so often? That's not a normal gameplay thing. This isn't an intended thing to be doing. So let's just hope for the best. Come on. I don't think there's any holes around here. There we go. Okay, perfect just realized I'm actually going to have to uh, name tag this guy. Let's call him Melvin. Why not? I'll leave him in the boat and he can just do some murder. Not on me. 
No, oh, leave me alone. Like, I think around here is probably where I'd want it the most. So I might do a bit of terraforming here and clear out an area. And we've got him in. Look, he's, he's down there and he's already got quite a few kills to his name. Thing is, it's kind of dangerous for me to go around and collect everything on my own. So I'm going to have to bring over that allay. Do I? I might have another one over here I can just uh, duplicate. I do. Okay, perfect. Actually, I've already got one spare. Okay, I'll just uh, take one of you guys. Ooh, actually, oh, duh. completely forgot about you already. <laughs> then I can just chuck uh, a note block here and then some like observers facing into it. Oh, there you go. Uh, the thing is, it's going to make this annoying sound constantly. And a way you can muffle it, I found out from an EFO video, is that you can use a player head. And it just so happens I have these two amazing player heads that Crispy made. They are amazing. Look. I have, I have a sons. I have sons. Look at him. <laughs> I love them. Oh, that's amazing. And I think I might leave one of them over here. These are just uh, player heads. I can have one of these kind of act as the, ooh, the caretaker of this area. So put one of them there. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Got a little uh, raft here. Not amazing, but hey, it does the job. And now I can just kind of leave this to uh, just go hog wild, and hopefully this will get me some uh, squids. The issue is that over here, uh, just beneath here, is still actually water, so squids can still spawn under here. So I might have to come by with some sponges at some point, and just kind of, uh, let's just take, a, take away some of the population. <laughs> And that is where I'm going to leave it for today. So I hope you all enjoyed. I uh, had a lot of fun with this one. Hopefully I'll be getting lots of money. And yeah, it's, yeah I'm, I'm excited. So I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Bye.